Okay, oh, I'll try that one again. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, yeah, my teeth are back in my mouth. Uh, we've got Thomas Fisher for you, um, FVT on the Twitters. Thomas, good morning. Good morning, Mike. How are you doing? Not so bad, mate. How are you? Hey, I'm Thomas. Okay. Hey, good, good, good. Okay, for the benefit of people that don't know who you are, um, would you mind just giving us a little intro as to, into who you are and what, what sort of stuff you get up to? Oh, that's a complicated one. So Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's try to do it. So, I mean, most people know me right now because uh, I'm one of the directors for B-Sides London, and I also participate heavily in conferences as, as a speaker as, and as just a participant. I like to share knowledge, and I like to, to help people get into learning new things and getting getting into the industry. Um, outside of that, um, I probably should say that anything I say is my personal opinions and that doesn't reflect anything, you know, employee type, employer situations, past, present or future. But, gotcha. but, yeah, <laughs> I heard you, that. You, you got to be careful with those things. Um, but essentially what I do, I've, I've been in many parts of our industry. You know, I started as a developer, but then I went into InfoSec what we now call InfoSec, what we now, well, well, actually we used to call InfoSec, now we call it cyber security. I don't care, it's just, you know, information security, it's security on top of IT. Um, I started in IT and I grew into, into, into security and I've been both insert responder, uh, architect, I've done compliance, past, you know, and I did, my focus has always been on uh, looking at what's, the actual valuable aspects to to potentially an attacker, whether inside or outsider. So in our situation today, I mean, what, you know, what what are IT systems managing? It's basically our data, right? So whether it's personal data or I, um, intellectual property or things like that, the whole aspects of for me of of doing what I do is is focused on how do we protect the data and how do we ensure that the data stays stays coherent. Sure. And and I'm, and I'm, and I'm touched by nef nefarious parties. I I met you at an ICS conference, as I recall, when you were working for Digital Guardian. Yeah, uh, was it or was it DeepSec that we first? Oh, it was DeepSec face, face to face. Yeah, I think it was DeepSec that we met first, make face to face. And I was always struck by you know a kind of the way you got pretty. I'm going to say uh, unflexible opinions of the of of the industry, and I, I was really strongly drawn to that. We, you know, so I think you know, out of a lot of our guests, you have some really interesting perspectives to share. What do you What do you think we're doing wrong? Um, I think part of our problem is a lot of times we're doing things for ourselves, trying to fix a problem that isn't potential. We're trying to fix a problem the way that we see it, not the way that the actual business might see it or that, mm. that the actual um, ad, uh, other people might see it. Um, I'm actually starting a rant and I'm, um, this is gonna be one of my talks for next year. Okay. So a preview for you guys. Um, my next talk is actually about stop user shaming. Okay. Uh, around the stop yeah. user shaming. We're always fucking blaming the, the user, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I, I'm assuming this isn't a, a safe for work environment, so it's going to be You carry on. You yeah. carry on. So it's like every fucking time I hear this, it's like, oh, the user did this, the user did that. Even in instant response, it's like, oh, this, that stupid fucking user, he clicked on the thing again, and now we've got a fucking botnet in our network. It's like, no, it's not the user's fault. If the user is doing it, it's because we're basically in a situation where we haven't given them or we haven't pre prepared the environment enough for them to be able to, to do things in the right way. Right. right? If, if you take a look at, you know, uh, everybody compares it to the car industry, but compare it to the car industry, right? Why is the car industry safer or the airplane industry safer? Because there is a risk. There's a known risk, right? There was, when cars started to appear, there was horse-drawn carriages and cars and people walking and the cars definitely went faster. So laws got introduced, right? And it got into a stage where, Basically, they had to build the cars to make them safe for the driver because you can't stop stupidity of the person, right? Because some right. people will drive fast because they think they know better and things like that. And as much as we try and make those solutions in IT and in, and in InfoSec, we're not actually giving the user a safe environment, right? We're just telling them, oh, don't do this. Don't click on this link. I mean, let's be fair. How many people... I'd like to see some real stats on how good user awareness programs actually work, right? Yeah. Not how 
good they're actually responding to your you know once a month phishing test but how much of your instance re re related to a user have actually gone down right and I, i'm pretty sure most organizations will, will not will, will will see that they're not actually reducing their instant rate um, that comes out of an end user because awareness doesn't awareness isn't really working you know we call it awareness is it training is it awareness is it training awareness has a specific has a specific um uh, has a specific meaning, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's not really training. It's not really giving people what they need to be able to do things correctly. Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah, so, so that's you know, and it just that's the kind uh, when you know, like what Ian was referring to. That's that's what pisses me off because a lot of times we're doing things for ourselves. We're not doing things to actually advance the industry. I mean, all of the hackers that present, oh, I found this new zero day, and I found this, and I've broken this, and I've broken that how the fuck do you fix it i don't care if you broke it give me a fucking way to fix it yeah, yeah. right i'm on a number of cfp boards my first comment is how do you fix this how is it as a customer a business owner do i protect myself against this right yeah. you can't give me that you know why because you're only interested in breaking the shit okay and it's like i mean grow up right we're no longer we're no longer like back in the 90s where hackers were it was cool to be you know to be on the hackers movie or to look to pretend to be like on the hackers movie we're actually an industry now we're actually we're actually a professional we have professional societies we have all this but yet we still act like fucking kids yeah it's a good point I t interesting that you the idea of, of user blaming is a subject that i i feel very strongly about um as do you clearly and really they we blame the individuals who we really need on side and that that's really what it's all about it's part and parcel of your arsenal to have people doing the right things but i always think that if, if something does go south within an organization it's probably a control that failed rather than the person uh, the, i agree was, i mean they, I, I yeah i agree go ahead Ian. There, there's this one incident though that it, it happened recently that i just found hysterical and it sort of underlines what you're talking about in a way but uh, as you know, the, the entity InfoSec Taylor Swift accidentally dropped a zero day, which, and, and Travis Orvindy was the one that pointed out the zero day. And that about literally half an hour to an hour later, there was an L register article on, on the zero day. And, yeah. and I thought that that was like comedy gold in a lot of ways. And, and I think you're right. I think folks that deliberately um, can't take themselves so seriously and just cannot get over themselves. That was just a brilliant situation where something accidentally happened. It was big. Um, it, it forced the revocation of a certificate across a huge install base. Did you follow that at all? Did you? Yeah, I was, I mean, I what did you think? So again, I wouldn't really call it a zero. This is one of the things I wouldn't call it a zero day. Fair. You can call it a zero day because, oh, wow, you know, I just discovered this and it's like everybody can exploit it. But the fact was it's just bad, lazy programming, right? I mean, let's yeah, face yeah. it. Um, uh, right now I'm doing this student in AppSec and you know, I'm helping some people with AppSec and I'm like, um, uh, the, the first thing I get, oh, it's like security isn't paid. And it's so like, we need to do this. We need to do this quickly. It's like, yeah, but if you, you know, if you want to get it, things done, and you want to make it safe then we need to build those controls in and the easiest way to build those controls in is if you start doing it from the, right from the beginning i that's this is where i also get really um, you know back to to your comment earlier i'm in stringent it's like that's not really a zero day right because right. it's not there's nothing really broken there it's just a bad programming practice so they put yeah they put a private key inside an app and you know it's easily accessible but is it a zero day no, you're not really not. breaking anything you're just abusing the you're abusing the system right right it's yeah. abuse yeah but not really a zero day and and that, that's the problem with our industry today too it's like oh i found this new this new fangled thing um uh, where uh, uh let me see how much press i can get of it let's see how things yeah are done. It, it pisses me off because it's something we, we've spoken about in a couple of our bear farmers talks is this idea of um <clears throat> zero days being hip cool and trendy if you're a uh, not to name him as Ian named him, but if you're a research officer working at Project Zero, then that's what you get paid to do. See, I have sympathy for Project Zero now because, and 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 maybe Travis is almost a victim of this because they 
their whole reason for existence is to essentially tear apart other company software in the interests, okay, of, of making the world a better place. But I think there's also another competing interest is that Google is a corporation. It likes to see its brand in the, in the news. They feel that the idea of calling out other software manufacturers for poor security is a way of contributing in a positive way through maybe this Machiavellian marketing lens. But you know, it is, are the are those Project Zero researchers just a victim of of a corporation? Uh, so I know. I, I mean, I, I know a few guys that work in the Google security team, uh, be it Project Zero or be it um, just the plain, you know, company. The, the guys that protect the company. I don't. I think they're a victim of their own success to a certain extent, right? they've that's the problem is once you get to that stage they i mean they've done some really good work in identifying things that are broken right and they've done it in the right way mm. and and so you get you get that label as like oh you're a fantastic researcher you're doing some really great job and that's great that's cool but then anything that comes out of your mouth seems to have this click or this following say oh this guy did you know found this and oh it's so you know like I don't even really have the words to express it. It's just it's just yeah. become like a following, you know, like um, a cult. Yeah, a cult. Yeah. I, yes, yeah. I mean, the cult of zero day. We launched it today. Yeah. I just bought the domain name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear the clickety click clack. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. But, though, at the end of the day, I mean, I I I protect my enterprise, and that's what I do. That's what they pay me for, and. I spend a lot of time not worrying about zero days. I spend time looking at them and, and reading the news and listening to people on Twitter talk about them. But what I care more about, and I've said this publicly, is the 30 bloody Debian boxes that have been sat there for 15 years that nobody knows about. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it's like, uh, come on, let's face it. It's like, uh, nobody's going to blow a zero day on an everyday company, right? Right. If you're going to blow a zero day, you're going to blow it on something really, really fucking important. Yeah. Not on some business trader or some, you know, bank or some, some, um, you know, like uh, commercial entity that has a web presence and that has ten Debian boxes. They don't fucking care about you. No. Not like that. Not, not. I mean, they probably will make you a target, but they've got much better ways to get at you. Um, where and that's where we go back to the beginning, which is the user, right? It's like right. It, it, we're not giving the user the, you know, the proper abilities to protect themselves or to 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 do things properly uh, so it's an open door to some yeah, literally when the job of most users is to click on links we're trying to tell them oh don't click on that link it's like well, but but my job is to click on links <laughs> so so i saw i think it was europol yeah. they have this ad going on 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 protect yourself against malware Okay. And it's like, it's like flat, you know, it's like one of those GIFs, screaming GIFs or whatever. I, I saw it the other day, but it's, it's, you know, it, it's, they're trying to do positive thing, trying to teach, right. teach people to, you know, be careful what they're doing. But then, it, then during that, that sequence, it goes only click on trusted websites on trusted links. I'm like, how the fuck is an everyday person supposed to know what a trusted link is? Good point. I mean, answer me that, right? It's like, what, we don't give them anything to tell them it's a trusted link as an industry. The, the, the vendors and the people that provide all these, all these fancy applications, stuff like that, they don't give them a, a means to actually tell you it's a trusted link. We have, as InfoSec people, have one. You know, do the MD5, do this. Got it. You've got like, uh, we can put the web server up and we can make sure that only, only like whitelisted URLs go through. But the, you know, the, your neighbor, the old person down the street, how yeah. are they supposed to know? They've not right. a clue. Agreed. Completely agree. Can I ask you a question about, uh, it's kind of users, but it's, it's, it's more around um, users of social media. <clears throat> and uh, there is a punchline to this. Uh, uh, about 18 months ago, you might remember T-Mobile Austria had a, a, a security incident. And oh. um, it was quite public. And a, a couple of quite notable individuals kind of got involved in, in the ridicule side of things. And then very quickly, it, it, it kind of precipitated a, a very large pylon onto the individual that was operating the Twitter account. Now, I find that incredibly distasteful and extremely irresponsible for 
so-called professionals in this industry to participate in. And I wonder what your thoughts are on that. We don't see it too much, but when it happens, it, it's, uh, it can be I quite see, a shit storm. I seem, to see, I seem to see it happen more often than we think, actually. Right. I, I get a lot of people like complaining about this or that. I saw one uh, retweeted yesterday by Jack Daniels, I think. Uh, one of these types of things, user sh- well, it's, we're back to the user shaming. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's, I mean, the guy's just trying to do his job or whatever, and maybe he does it wrong. Um, and then everybody takes him apart, right? I mean, what's the point? Yeah. 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 Literally, what's the point? I, I, I mean, we're back to the fucking playground at, and we're 10 years old. It's like, you know, I'm going back to this, grow up. We're not, we're not a young industry anymore. We need to grow up. We need to stop this. Um, the, uh, similarly to that one, remember the um, a couple of years ago, the data breach for um, in the UK, uh, uh, ISP, ISP, uh, what, uh, talk, 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 yeah, thanks. Yeah. And you know, CEO tried to come onto onto TV, tried to explain what was going on. Totally, I'm fucking prepared. You know, I agree yeah. with that. She, she was really badly advised. But instead of actually some people trying to pick up learning points for this, half of our industry just basically fucking taught her a new asshole. Yeah. Which she didn't need. She was already in too much. She was already enough shit as it is. You know, it's, uh, I mean, we should, you know, we talk about doing all this sharing and, and compromise, you know, sharing information and providing support for each other and, you know, mentoring all this. But then as soon as something like, oh, I can get my, I can get my, um, my, my, my two cents in and become famous. I'm going to tear this person a new asshole just because it'll make me look better because I know better. It's like, yeah. do you really know better? It's like, let's wait till tomorrow until something happens, happens to you and you don't know any better. Yeah. And so everybody else treats you the same way. It's like, treat people the way you want to be treated. Don't stop, you know, like taking people apart and just like, just because, oh, I can make a name for myself or I can be in this tweet, of, tweet feed and, and, and be m- nice and nasty. Yeah. C- cyber payback's a bitch and your stripper name is Karma. <laughs> I like you, karma. You've been waiting to say that for I have been. PM it's one of yesterday. my favorite lines. And of course, say thank you, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Thomas. And I knew I could rely on you for the perfect setup for that. <laughs> a quick a quick question, Thomas, on on maybe something a little bit lighter. So B sides London is probably I think the the, the biggest B sides in the, in the certainly in the UK in terms of uh, people attending it. Um, we had the privilege of giving a talk down there this year. Um, what have you got planned for next year? I'm sure it's going to be bigger and better and stuff. What have you got in mind? So next year is the 10th anniversary, actually. Cool. Wow. Yeah, B sides London's been around for 10 years, um, so we're going to have to do something. Probably the, the refreshing breath of Infosec Week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the the real ma- the real matter <laughs> yeah absolutely uh no uh, it's still basically up in the air right now um, okay we need to figure out something to do um, it, usually planning and committees start now so it's you know where things are going to start getting getting done uh but it's it's tough it's a tough it's tough um I mean, I, I I've been looking at all the all the things that've been going on. B sides. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and help out with B sides Dublin here now. Now that I'm based in Ireland, in Dublin. Cool. Um, we should have a we should have a track in the puking dragon. <sighs> the bar upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard though because we cannot for that one we can only we can only do the back room. You know where the ah uh, yeah that, that back part. They need to keep the rest open for for normal guests. Um, B sides London is really special for me. It was um, huge. Special. Yeah, I mean, in, in 2018, it was my first public uh, talk uh, down on track three. Um, I followed directly after Andy Gill, which was quite daunting. So, did you you did the um, the rookie track? I, I did track three. It was upstairs. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. My talk was on web application firewalls, and it seemed to be well received. So I thought oh, that's all right, not bad for my first effort. But then winding the clock forward 12 months, turning up. On the main track, I think we had about 400 people in the room uh, with the beer farmers, and we had the, the the privilege of being joined by Troy Hunt and Scott Helm. So it was a super special thing. So for me, Beaches London is 
it, it has a special place in my heart. And if we it's a get, spiritual home of the beer farmers, I think so. Yeah. And if and if um, if we can get down there for next year for your tenth, that would be superb. So we'll get we'll get our pencil sharpened and try and put for the CFP. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, well, you have to CFP and try your luck. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, the great so thing you, should, you shouldn't hesitate. You know, I mean, this is outside of outside of you guys. So this is this is a message to everybody. It's like if you have something to share and you think you know something, I mean, you should try, right? If you've never right. done it before and you're afraid, that's what the Ricky track is for, right? So if you if this is if you if you've never spoken, you want to try speaking, sign up for the Ricky track. You know, I mean, we it's a great way to learn because you get a mentor, you get somebody who'll help you. You only have to be up there for 15 minutes. So it's, you know, the time constraints makes it a little bit easier. Um, and you get that experience. I mean, you shouldn't be afraid to talk. Uh, and I think, and I feel, and this is a problem that, uh, you know, we could go off for this whole problem for, for hours, but we're back to that. It all comes back to, you know, that shaming aspect that we were talking about earlier, right? Uh, just on the Twitter feed and stuff like that. It's like people, some people are afraid to talk because they're, they're afraid that they're going to be badly received. And it's a shame because you can, you can learn something from everybody, right? It's like this, mm -hmm. nobody has nothing to say. Everybody has an opinion and that opinion might give you something to think about. All of my talks today are about changing changing your thought process even my latest one that i've been doing that, that i did like last week at DeepSec, you know it's, it's an ir talk but i'm not talking about anything in specific i'm talking about think about what you're doing and, and look at the way you're doing things and maybe think that there might be something better to do right or some some different way to do and that's why i appreciate people who go up and stand up on stage because even if they're talking about the way that they did it if they give you like a story and they give you like this is what i found this is how i fixed it you can learn something, right? There's always yeah. a take back. Completely agree. And we, uh, we've said in a number of our talks this year that if, you know, you can have 400 people in the audience, you can have five people in the audience. It doesn't matter. If you materially change one individual and they leave that conference and go off and do something positive, then job done, right? Yeah. yeah. Job yeah we, can save, we can save the industry one new person at a time. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. I mean, Listen, um, Tom, yeah. we, yeah, we run out of time, time, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. But I really enjoyed listening to you. I think, yeah, you've, oh, yeah. you've made some incredibly good points and, yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff that you do. So, on behalf of the beer farmers and on behalf of the people listening, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. And people, please donate so they can get their challenge up. Yeah, um, we'd love that. Much. Thank yeah. you so much. You guys are close to 5K now, right? Isn't it? Not far yeah. away. Not yeah. far away. We are at 4,808 4, pounds, so we're nearly at 5K, yeah. Um, yeah so congrats, thanks guys. very much, mate. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good rest of the podcast. Thanks very much. Thank Talk to you soon. Bye.